How's it going guys? Most likely you're probably booking a cruise or maybe getting excited about a cruise or just have some questions. We are going to do a Disney cruise Q&A. So we asked on Instagram and also our YouTube channel if you guys had any questions for your Disney cruise and you guys delivered. So we're going to go through some of them and answer them and it's going to be a good time. If you've just stumbled across us, I'm, I almost said I'm just... <laughs> This is Justin, I'm Lacey, and we love Disney cruises. We actually have one coming up. It's gonna be our first time embarking on The Wish. We are super excited. So this is always a fun video we like to do before we go on Disney cruises. Just answer some of you guys' questions. And then also it helps us get more information of things that maybe we weren't, we weren't aware of to go on the cruise too. So get your coffee, get your tea, or your beverage of choice. Mm -hmm. Sit back, relax, and let's answer some questions. Okay, so there's no order or categories for these questions. We're just going to go for it. So mm -hmm. here we go. Do you guys have a budget for what you spend while on the ship? So excursions, packages, drinks, tips, souvenirs, mm -hmm. etc. Great question. Yeah. I think what we're going to do is kind of break it down a tad. Yeah. So excursions. Um, we have all of that paid in full ready to go before we embark on the, on the ship. Mm -hmm. As so, well as tips, I would say, too. You can do that. As well, mm -hmm. yes. Was, well, um, with some you can pay beforehand, so, right? Yeah, you can do, um, you can pay, prepay for all your tips beforehand as far as mm -hmm. like your waiter staff and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and we do that. So we have everything pretty much ready to go. And so we kind of know going into it how much we're spending already uh, for excursions and for tips. Now, mm -hmm. we actually do bring like actual cash right. for tips. Mm -hmm. um, we like to do that for room service. Um, and for just if someone's just kind of going above and beyond, we'll give them a tip as well. Mm -hmm. well. You can actually do the tip on the app for room service, mm -hmm. but we like to just to do cash. I, I don't know. It's just I think it's there's what, that's just what we do. Mm -hmm. And so we bring a whole stack of ones and fives and uh, we'll just kind of give out depending. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a separate budget, I guess, there. But as far as the other categories, like just for things like on the ship, like getting souvenirs mm -hmm. or, you know, the things that cost extra drinks of the day, smoothies, whatnot. We don't usually set like an actual like this is our limit today, you know. It's more of a thing of where we go on the ship with having an idea of a certain things like we want to get. So his is usually like a hat or, you know, I'd like to get maybe a new spirit jersey. And we kind of do that for the boys, um, our kids as well. So like we'll tell them, you know, you guys can pick out, you know, one toy or, you know, one, you know, day if they're, you want to get, you know, a special treat that's extra. Um, so that one we don't usually set like a, a price number it's for. More, it's more items, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So because yeah, we, we go into stress. it, like we want to get an ornament or a mug or mm -hmm. this time I want to get like, the actual Disney cruise ship because last time it was recalled okay. for whatever reason. So I'm hoping they're there. I didn't see that. Were they just like... A you know the actual Disney cruise ships? Yeah. The little, the little mini versions? Oh, okay. Like I've always wanted to get one and yeah. every year I'm like, oh, I'll get it next time. And then this on the... Our, was it the Wonder we were on the Dream? Magic. Magic, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to get it. And I asked and they're like, oh, they're recalled. Hmm. So anyway, now this is the thing. It really is easy to spend money on the mm -hmm. Disney cruise because it's just easy to make purchases. Mm -hmm. And you forget what you already purchased, you know? And so if you're worried about it, you can always go to guest services and kind of see where you're at. Yeah, to let you know what you spent and what yeah. you put on your card. And that way you can kind of just see that number. That way at the end of the cruise, you're like, oh my God, you know, it's like Kevin McAllister in the hotel. Yeah. His dad's like, Kevin! Spend <laughs> Yeah, there. you don't want to do that. All right, next question. Do you guys rent a car, use private transportation, Uber? Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> all the above. Right, <laughs> we've done B. them all. <laughs> it really depends on where our port is. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we were uh, cruising out of New Orleans, we used Uber mm -hmm. and a private shuttle. And it just depends on how long we're staying, you know, around that port before we actually cruise, all that. Mm -hmm. This cruise we're taking, we're actually, we're, we're using Disney transportation for, for all of it. Mm -hmm. um, so their Disney transportation will actually pick us up at the airport, take us to the cruise, and then they're going to take us to Walt Disney World after that. So yeah, we've used all three. It really depends on the port. Uber, Lyft, Mirrors transportation mm -hmm. is really good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you want to get fancy, get a limo. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So the next question kind of goes along with what we were previously asked, but it says, we're going on our first cruise as a family of five. We're sailing out of Fort Myers. Curious how you get from airport to hotel, port with three littles. Do your boys still need any type of car seat? We have three kids, four and under, so we need three car seats. So that's another good thing to think about with yep. your transportation. We have found some in the past where they provide car seats and mm -hmm. you just let them know how many. Mm -hmm. Usually it's um, like private services that we did that for, but we just told them, hey, we're gonna need you know, a booster seat or car seat, and they had it in there ready to go for us. So that's really nice. So I would just check 
with some, you yeah. know, different transportation like companies or if you want to do private and just see if they have have them to rent, I feel like it's pretty easy to do. And most of them, I feel like, do that we've checked through. Yeah, that way, if, if you're literally just going from the hotel, you know, from the airport to the hotel, from the hotel to your your ship, mm -hmm. and you're not renting a car, sometimes just seeing if your transportation company has a car seat is the best bet, rather than having to lug your car seats um, through TSA and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've done that in the past, and it's it's been great. Mm -hmm. Our next question, I know this cruise will be on the Wish, and we were on the Magic in March. Hey, we were on the Magic in March. We were. Oh. Mm. <laughs> but don't recall if you sailed on all the Disney Cruise Line ships. Do you have a favorite ship? Uh, okay, this is a great question. Yes, yeah, so we've been on the Magic, mm -hmm. and we've done the Wonder. Like 30,000 times, it seems like. like. It, a, a lot. <laughs> and then we've done the Fantasy. Uh-huh. And now we'll be doing, we will be doing the Wish. So the only one we haven't done in the fleet is the Dream. Is the Dream in, yep. until the Treasure right. comes out. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know why we we just we just can't get on the Dream. Itinerary. The, the itinerary. It's, it's all the itinerary. Never itinerary. Never yeah, but we'd us. like to do it one day. Yeah. Personally, I I liked the Fantasy. I do like um, mm -hmm, the, the bigger, bigger ships. Ship. So I have a feeling the Wish might be my new favorite. I don't mm. know. We'll see. We'll see. But I would say the Fantasy is my favorite ship as well. Yeah. Um, I really do like the Wonder because mm -hmm. I think it's just, again, it, it was our first ship we ever sailed on mm -hmm. in our honeymoon. It's always nostalgic mm -hmm. for me for that ship. The memories. The memories, yeah. all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But I would say probably the Fantasy. Mm -hmm. At this point, yeah. I feel like, though, the Treasure <clears throat> is going to be my favorite ship. The vibe of it, I feel like. I just love it. It's like super, like, Captain totally Quarter kind of vibes. Like. I mean, Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But the Wish might be pretty pretty cool. I mean, we like them all. Mm -hmm. But I would say I would, right now, fantasy. I know, and I would say that too. Whenever we get asked this question, I'm not like, oh, I don't like this ship. I only like this. I would go on any <laughs> Disney cruise ship. I would, and I would have a blast. Yeah. If I, if somebody's like, hey, you have to pick one. And from what I've done, I do like the newer ones. I feel like they have just a little more to offer, and well, I do like that they have, you know, the yeah. the new slides. I think that's why we're excited about the Wish, though, is yeah. because we've done the Wonder and the Magic. You know, the kind of the Maybe. older ships of the fleet. And it'll just be nice exploring a brand new ship yeah. on this one. So. Yep. How often do you see the kids? Do they spend more time at the kids club than with you? I think... I would say no to that. Yeah. They definitely, I would say, spend more time with us than the kids club. They really do. Yeah. I, uh, they, I mean, we all, A, a we like to just spend time with each other. Um, it is nice to have that that parent break for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but our boys, they, they like to be in the kids club for like two hours max. Mm -hmm. So they'll be like, you're coming back in two hours, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Uh, they enjoy themselves. I they have a blast. wonder with the wish though if they will want to be in there a little bit longer. Right. So we Could plan they? on doing another whole like Disney Q and A when we get back from our Disney cruise. And so I don't know, things might change yeah. on that. Yeah. But and yeah. just for you guys that don't know, our boys, um, they are eight and our second son, Tucker, he is almost six. Yeah. So they'll be eight and six on this cruise. But yeah, for them, I think they're they know how there's so much other things they enjoy on the ship. I think they just love pool they time love with us. Pool. And they, they are, they're already talking about like that they get to go get their own ice cream. Yeah, they're and very like, excited Dad, about Dad, when that. you're chilling out by the pool, I'm just going to go and be like, hey, I'm going to go get my own ice cream, my own pizza. Like they're getting to that point where that, that independence is just they're really just, exciting. Yeah, he is. So they love that He part. says that almost every day. He's like, Dad, you know what I'm excited about? <laughs> Is when you're hanging by the pool, I'm going to get my own pizza. I'm like, all right, man. Mm -hmm. More power to you. Yeah. But don't get me wrong. They love the kids club. I don't, I, I wouldn't say they spend more time there than with us. I feel like it's definitely the opposite. But mm -hmm. it's always nice when we want to go do something. It's and probably like 70, That's 30. where they go. 70, 30. 70 with us, 30 in the kids yeah. club. Yeah. We'll see on the wish though. Yeah. Maybe it's like 50, 50. Mm -hmm. We hear about embarkation day with kids, but can you all talk about disembarkation day with kids and how to make it seamless. So we actually have a video mm -hmm. of, of our embarkation day, kind of like tips and tricks. Walk we, you kind of through mm -hmm. it. Yeah. We plan on actually doing a disembarkation day, probably after this cruise, of just some tips and tricks. I would say the biggest thing is to make sure that you have all of your stuff ready to go mm -hmm. the night before. Yeah. So you have to have your stuff packed up and have your suitcase out the night before anyway, right. like your big, your big suitcase. But as far as like your carry-on, Literally just take out like um, your the clothes for that next day, have mm -hmm. them laid out, um, and Toiletries. then have room ready to go. So when the kids change, you just put their pajamas in that bag, mm -hmm. in your, your uh, backpack or whatever, and then have them change. Yeah. Um, and then you take all of your stuff 
all your all your stuff to breakfast right. if you're planning on going to breakfast mm -hmm. before you leave. Because they're already starting to clean your room. Yeah, while you you're do at not breakfast. leave your stuff in the stateroom. Mm -hmm. You take it with you. Mm -hmm. So once you leave for breakfast, you're saying goodbye to your stateroom. Mm -hmm. And that is probably the biggest tip. Yeah. So I would say the the key to it is the night before. Like just take mm -hmm. some time. Yes. Depending on your family size, it may take a little bit of time. We had two rooms last time because um, we had my sister traveling with us as well. So it was just, it was a lot. And we had Junie, which my, our daughter, she was a baby. So it took, you know, a good amount of time, but just getting that done. And then we were just felt a lot, you know, like prepared that next morning because yeah. it was literally just like okay everything was here's ready. your clothes to wear stuff the clothes put the old, in put you know clothes, pajamas yeah. in there and then you're ready to go yeah so, i would say yeah. too um as you're kind of thinking about late dining um and main dining the one benefit actually about late dining i know late dining sometimes with people with kids they don't you don't like it but the cool thing about late dining is you also get late breakfast on mm -hmm. on, on your last day if you want to do sit down yeah, yeah, because we did cabanas last time. We did cabanas. Oh, you well. know what? That's another tip, though. Yeah, it's just going to cabanas. Mm -hmm. um, actually, that's 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 a secret we, sauce. We really enjoyed that. We last did. Time. So you can you because so basically how it works is you can actually go to uh, the actual restaurant, sit down for your breakfast, mm -hmm. or you can go to cabanas. We did cabanas last time, and 110 percent we're doing that again this time mm -hmm. because. It's way more relaxed. You don't mm -hmm. feel rushed because when you're at the restaurant, you feel rushed. Mm -hmm. But here, you don't feel rushed. Yeah. It just depends what you like because it's it, nice it to you know, see your servers again for the last it's time. It's true. It's true. If you want to do that yeah. or if you're just planning on doing cabanas or which in the wish is the Mar Marceline Market, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can tell the, your staff or, you know, your crew that you've had serve you the night before, your goodbyes and everything. That's what we did last time. Yeah. So... But I would really say, enjoyed that. I would say though, <laughs> if you're looking for something with less stress and having more time, I would go to Cabana's or, or whatever the buffet, the Marceline mm -hmm. Market. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would. That would be. That would be the tip. Yeah. So yeah. We are going on a cruise in March, and I have a two and a half year old. Did you guys plan naps or just wing it? Um. A little bit of both, depending on the day. It is. I would say naps where it's kind of a thing where we'd look at our schedule, what we'd like to do, and then sometimes we would just realize, you know, in those pockets, like, hey, this would be a really good time to get a nap in. Like, sea days, sea days are pretty easy. Yeah. Because you can tell your kids are getting tired, they're by the pool, right. let's go back, and you kind right. of know your your times for mm -hmm. that. I would say... Um, and sometimes we would take shifts with that, too. So Justin's mm -hmm. like, I just feel like ordering some room service, I'll hang out, they'll take a nap, and then I'm like, cool, I'm going to go to the pool or maybe yeah, you know, she's, shopping. She's more of the, the pool girl anyway, so she'll be like, I'll stay here. I'll, be, I'll go back day. to Tucker. I'm right. fine with that. Go on my veranda and yeah. drink some coffee. But then like when there's all the trivia and games, like I like doing that too, but he was out yeah. and I was like, I'll stay in the room and yeah, yeah. Uh, so nap. So we, we do tag We it. just kind of tag I think teams. when, you know, there's port of call and all that kind of stuff, those days get a little bit different. So again, like looking at your itinerary, what you want to accomplish that day, if you have any mm -hmm. excursions, um, and then plan your naps. Yeah. But honestly, but naps are so important though. They do. Or at help. least, at least like if you're Landon, our eight year old, he hates naps. He's hated naps for the last well, several he's eight. years. No. <laughs> I get that. But, but when he is young, I mean, yeah. Lot, he, he's, yeah. But for him, he just needs time to just be alone. Be alone. And, kind of be and so sometimes we'll put him in the bath in the cabin. Mm -hmm. um, and just that little 30, 40 minutes, or he'll go on the, 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 the him. yeah, or he'll go on the veranda. Um, and just get some room service with a Mickey bar or something like that. Yeah. That's all he needs, and he's energized for the rest right. of the evening. So yeah. I think having that, you know, introvert it's time is important, critical. Because there's yeah. so much always going on. Overstimulated, for sure. <laughs> now, if you're like our son Tucker, who could fall asleep at dinner, <laughs> which if you've seen any of our Disney Cruise vlogs, has happened multiple times, he will sleep anywhere. Anywhere. Any time of the day. He has a special gift. He, yeah, he, but mostly he hasn't, sleeps, like, he hasn't, hasn't fell asleep in the pool yet, which is a good thing. <laughs> But I'm just saying, like, that kid will sleep anyway. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> By the way, guys, these questions are fantastic. Thank yes, you so thank much. You. And also, if you have not subscribed to our channel, consider doing that. And maybe check again. Maybe you think you're subscribed, but sometimes YouTube's weird. Uh, check again. But we have, like Lacey said, we are going on a Disney cruise soon. We're also going to Disney World right after that. So we'll have a lot of Disney content. And then we'll have more kind of, you know, packing stuff and all that coming mm -hmm. up, too. Ring that bell so you know when we have new videos and also like this video because it really helps this video helps our channel gets the word out all that kind of stuff on to the next advice about seasickness remedies for kids under three i know they have the 
the bands and, and kids' medicine, but most of that says three and older. Yeah. If younger kids get cranky, what can you do to give them some relief? Mm -hmm. We didn't experience this a lot. I know Landon did one night. He's like, oh, I feel a little sick. Usually the first night, I feel like, is where it's mm -hmm. always kind of like the hardest. Yeah. I think for us is we just make sure that they get a lot of fresh air, mm -hmm. um, especially the first part of it, um, yeah. making sure that they're out on deck or mm -hmm. on the veranda, and that's always helped. Yeah, um, definitely. And I, I don't, we haven't really had any issues other than that. Right. Sometimes, again, we draw a bath um, mm -hmm. for, for the boys, and that seems to help them so much mm -hmm. for whatever reason, just taking a hot bath in the stateroom. Mm -hmm. um, if they're cranky with any reason, I don't know. A bath has just been our like our go-to. <laughs> You want to take a bath, and they just calm down. I don't know what it is. The ba the bath is just like their safe space. Yeah. I don't know. Something to try. But as far as like other things too, um, <clears throat> like it, for example, we've been on cruises where our boys got ear infections. Okay, it happens. And just so you know, they have a little doctor's office on board, mm -hmm. and they prescribe all that stuff. If you forgot ibuprofen or Tylenol, all that kind of stuff, they have that there too. Mm -hmm. Now, it's as a little on the pricier side. Yeah, I mean, I would say mm -hmm. the ibuprofen and Tylenol actually isn't that pricey. It is. It's more pricey than like Costco. Mm -hmm. But to see the doctor to get prescribed like antibiotics, now that is, yeah. So you know, just again, you know your kids, you know all that so I would maybe talk to your pediatrician before you go on the cruise and just kind of get your ducks in a row in case things happen mm -hmm. um, that's just been our best bet we'll talk to our pediatrician and say hey you know our kids you know what they n normally will happen on vacations and you know we can get things kind of figured out before we head out all right this one says you show you and the kids on the cruise but I know your sister goes too. what does she enjoy most of on the cruises. My kids are older. We actually were looking at these questions before and my sister was here so I asked her like, okay, what? Some bit, somebody wants to know some questions about you. What do you like? And she said she just really enjoys like doing the trivia. She's all about like a lot of those um, things, the animation drawing. She loves going to all of those. Um, and also I think she said the food, just yeah, eating 100%. and relaxing. Which yeah. reading a book on deck, all those things I enjoy as well. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, for her age too, it, she just likes just wandering around. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think I think that's so much fun. I like doing that too, where it's just I want to take a time and just like mm -hmm. wander around the ship and just explore. And I'd have to say, wandering around, you always will come into finding something yep. going on. Totally, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah. Which theme Disney cruise? So for example, like Marvel Day at Sea or um, you know Very Merry. Would you want to do? Mm -hmm. Um, we've done the Very Merry and we've done Halloween on the High, Halloween seas. On the high seas. I think probably the Marvel Day would be kind of cool. I think the boys would love the Marvel Day. I think that so. would be really cool. Or the to Star see Wars all the superheroes. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm like, we're not super big. Is this weird to say? Like, we're not super big into the themed cruises. Yeah. Like, if. If the itinerary and the dates work Worked out, with us. sure, but we're not. We seeking, wouldn't seek it out. We're not yeah. seeking it out. Like mm -hmm. we just aren't. I think the very merry was awesome. I think mm -hmm. I would like to try that again as the kids are a little bit older, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things we just didn't really take advantage of because the kids, you know, they're tired, go to bed, whatever. So I think that'd be kind of fun to do. Yeah. Um, I think one of the coolest cruises we did, and it really was it themed the very merry. Yeah, it was. Is when we went on New Year's Eve, or no, that wasn't no. themed. But I don't know, something about sailing on New Year's Eve was my favorite itinerary. That was really fun. Because we were on deck, they were throwing up, they did fireworks twice that mm -hmm. that cruise. Yeah. Um, and they had like, you know, a bunch of stuff happening on New Year's mm -hmm. Eve and that was awesome. Yeah. Like, I would love to do that again. Yeah. Uh, but that's not really a theme cruise. Mm -hmm. But if you're able to get your itinerary over that, Highly recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one I did a little research on, but somebody asked, kids club age range changes mm. your thoughts yeah so i was doing a little little digging on the interweb and man people are not happy about this no i was like reading some posts and some people and i get it i mean i get canceling it. their cruise because of it yeah. but if you don't know effective on sailings embarking december 21st 2023 or later the new ages are so for ocean years club and lab it's three to ten the edge is now ages 11 to 14 and the vibe is 14 to 17. Now they used to do a thing I was reading up where you could overlap. We didn't know about this too much because our kids weren't in that age range, but if you were in that range, I think it was like 
you know, past like 12 and up, you could overlap. So that means you could go to the edge, but then you could also go to the Ocean Years Club and Lab. Mm. They are no longer allowing overlaps. Mm. It's once you turn yeah. that age, you need to go that's hard. to that club. That's hard. Yeah, because there's some people that are saying, hey, I have a kid that's 11, I have one that's eight, and they want to go be together. I'm like, what okay, a bummer. So this is the thing. I, I understand mm. at some point, as far as the age goes, like, mm -hmm. there's going to be that. Like, there's going to be the thing where it's like, they're going to have to split at yeah. some point. But I feel like that age is so young. They need a buddy at that age. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I know Landon and Tucker, I mean, they're not at that age yet. But I, even if, I would imagine if Landon was 10 and Tucker, or if Landon was 11. 11. 11? Okay, yeah. Landon was 11. And so that would, Tucker would be 8-ish. Mm -hmm. Nine. Probably 9. Yeah. I would imagine they'd want to be together still. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, or if you're going like with you know friends and family, and there's you know they want to be together. Yeah, with all the cousins and that's stuff. A that's hard, hard. Age range to, to to do it, and I I I do understand they've probably got their reasons for it. Well, there, I mean, but, it's probably so that things don't get so booked out. I mean, there's, yeah. there's probably uh, some of the spaces that are empty versus some of the spaces that are filling. And yeah. I, and I understand, so I get that whole behind the scenes aspect right. of it. But I'm also but, thinking about. Because, you know, we, I remember we used the kids club when Landon first turned three and there were kids in there that were 12 and I was like, wow, like that's a big age range to have like your three-year-old there with 12-year-olds. So yeah, I can hard. understand them kind of wanting to get the little bit older kids into the area. I get but that But then too. I also am thinking about because, the wish. Well, because when Landon, when he first went into Ocean, he didn't like it because there was too many, there was big kids big in kids. there. And so I understand yeah. that too. Yeah. But I was thinking about the wish and with their whole like... Star Wars launch bay area and you know, we haven't seen it yet, but just from watching it I'm like wow like that is so cool. I bet there's a lot of kids that you know want to check that out That yeah. are past that, you know age range granted There's our op the open houses times and which I'm sure that's what the cast members are sharing like come at the open house but to you know to split that up and you know, make that change. I'm sure it's been yeah, that, hard. Yeah, that is a hard age to yeah. do that. It sounds like there's a lot of feedback. It sounds like people are not happy with it. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll see what Disney does if they keep that or yeah, like, it is it is a hard age. Yeah, not to have overlap. And let us know. Comment down below if you guys have been affected by this. If you have a cruise that's mm -hmm. booked and you just found out, you know, if is this gonna you know be a really hard thing for you guys like. Yeah, it's kind of curious. Splitting up your kids around that age range, or mm -hmm. are your kids excited about it? I'm curious to know. Yeah, too. let us know your thoughts. This is a yeah. good question. Let's yeah. know your thoughts on just the whole this whole thing and mm -hmm. what you think about it too. So mm -hmm. it's really helpful when people kind of discuss things in the comments because other people watching these videos can look down there and just kind of get different point of views and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. appreciate it. All right, here's a good one. How can you do late dining with an infant when they prefer bedtime at six thirty? Right. Okay, so this is what we did when we went in Magic in Magic. When we went in March with our um, daughter Juniper, who was like six or seven months at the time, our favorite travel stroller is the Duna. And this was awesome because she loves sleeping in it and it's very small and it's very portable and I literally could just roll it up to our table and I had like a little thing to cover and she would just go to sleep mm -hmm. while we were eating our dinner. But then there are some times where she just, you know, it's hard with how loud it is in there and just depending on the day. Um, we used the nursery, mm -hmm. so we did use the nursery on some times and um, put her in the it's a Small World Nursery while we had our late dinner. Um, because it is, I mean, it's pretty late. By the time we got out of there, sometimes it could be like, you know, 945. Yeah. So those were two things that we did but it seemed to work mm -hmm. for yeah, us. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. small world nursery. You, yeah. you can book those ahead of time as well. Mm -hmm. If you want to just pick, hey, look, we want to, you know, have the late dining and have her go to sleep mm -hmm. for the whole night and just start, start booking them out. Yeah, and the nursery was really good about it because, you know, they knew it was late, so I'd pack her jammies. They put her in our jammies and everything. Mm -hmm. So then after dinner, we'd just go pick her up and just go, go back to bed in our room. Yeah. So, yeah. Easy peasy. <laughs> Which Disney World park should we visit before our cruise? Mm. Um, so we've done this before where we just did one one day mm -hmm. somewhere and we did Magic Kingdom. We did, yeah. Uh, I think that is the one to go to. Mm -hmm. I guess it really just depends on the age yeah. of your kids and who's right. all going. What you but enjoy. For us, I'm like, man, I want to hit Pirates of the Caribbean mm -hmm. and I just want to get the magic. The yeah, I, I want to I see the Fab Five kind of a thing before mm -hmm. we... Hit our, hit our ship. So yep. we did that. We actually went to, where did we stay? Art of Animation? Yep. 
So we stayed at Art, Art of Animation, and with I think it was your family, mm-hmm. and then we uh, and we did Disney Springs. We did Disney one Springs, day, and then the and next then day we did Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom, and the following day we went right to our cruise. Yep. So that was fun. Yeah. Best place to stay in Florida if leaving out of Port Canaveral. We on this cruise are staying at the Hyatt in the Orlando Airport. Mm-hmm. We think that is the best hotel to stay if you're not going to the parks, whatever. Because mm-hmm. if you actually book hotels through Disney, um, the Hyatt is one of the hotels that they're going to recommend. Uh, because you can actually leave your luggage in the hotel mm-hmm. and they will pick it up for you and take it to the cruise. Mm-hmm. So you don't even have to mess with your luggage. You don't even have to leave the airport. It's you don't like have to leave the airport. Crazy. So we, the first time we did this was on our honeymoon and we stayed there. And so it's going to be fun doing it again now I with, know. you know, three kids later. But it was so seamless. So seamless. And just took so much stress out of just like yeah. getting a rental car, getting to your hotel, getting your pack, unpacking. It just felt like you were just, you know, hanging out. Here's You got off the airplane, you know, get something to eat. Your room's right here. And then they took your luggage for you. And then we yeah. went right on the ship. So it was so like cool. Our, so our itinerary, in case you're curious, is we were leaving um, and we get to Orlando around midnight. Uh, and so we're staying in the hotel that night, and we're going to be in the hotel all day <laughs> the next day. And then the following day, we leave for a cruise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did that because, you know, I mean, it was just, it worked better for our schedules, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and flights. But yeah, it's going to be fun just to kind of get in that vacation mode. We'll just kind of explore the airport, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll use the pool and mm-hmm. whatever. Okay. Um, but they um, will notify you about 48 hours uh, before of when they need you to be at the shuttle, uh, mm-hmm. to take you to Port Canaveral. And so they, yeah, they just, they set it up all for you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you get all ready to go and you call Disney and make sure you want to, you, you got to call Disney and, and, and purchase the transportation, the, the Disney transportation, the ground transportation. You add mm-hmm. that to your, your cruise. Disney already has sent us our luggage tag. So we slap those on we're leaving them in our room and then we head to, you know, the ground transportation. The hotel knows exactly where that's at because mm-hmm. A lot of people that cruise Disney through Port Canaveral stay there, Mm -hmm. and it is. It really is very seamless, so Mm -hmm. we're excited about it. Next question is, what would you prioritize for a three-slash-four-night cruise versus a seven-night cruise? Great question. I think it just depends on what you want to accomplish for your vacation. So if we were just doing a cruise, so for example, we talked about how we went to the park for one day, and then we did a cruise. That was a seven-night cruise. And so we ended up just doing the park for a day or two, and then we did the seven-night and that was great. I would say if we do seven night cruises, we usually don't go to the parks very long. Mm-hmm. It's usually one or two days, if at all. Uh, we haven't done a the parks in a cruise for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, if we're if we're doing uh, the parks, then we'll do a three or four night cruise, mm-hmm. just so we can kind of fit everything in. So I guess it just depends. I would say if we are just doing a cruise, we will always prioritize a seven night mm-hmm. at least. Uh, we will not go anything below that if it's just if that is our main vacation Mm -hmm. all right this question says does my five-year-old need a passport this is a question we do get a lot and it really does depend on where you're going um but we get always caught up when we look at their website because you have to scroll all the way down because there's always fine print for everything but for our cruise coming up it it'll say like you know, between these ages, you need this, and it'll, it'll list everything out. But I forget the certain age they share on the website, but it'll say, you know, that they just need a birth certificate. But then it'll also specify, you know, each um, area. So wherever your itinerary is, it'll show you what's um, uh, required. So I would definitely check your itinerary, check your the ages, and just make sure, you know, everything is right within that because... Um, yeah, it's kind of tricky. So just make sure and just look at where you're going, what your kids' ages are. It never hurts just to get a passport. I know we've shared that before in the past because that kind of just covers all your basis. But um, if they're under a certain age, it's usually a birth certificate with um, some places, but not all. So just check your itinerary, as I said, like 3,000 times. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I I think people go back and forth like, should I just get a passport? Um, is the birth certificate going to be fine? We usually just travel with the birth certificates for our kids at this mm-hmm. age. However, if you are super worried about it because, you know, of just what the what ifs, I just get the passport. Mm-hmm. Just, it, it, just, you know, be stress-free about it, get the passport. 
Um, we had a passport for Landon when he was an in, like a baby, mm -hmm. uh, but that's expired now. And so we're just like, you know what? We're not going to get passports for the kids until a certain age or if we go out of the country for something different. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what we do mm -hmm. to each their own. Yeah. All right. Tips for getting to see lots of characters. Mm -hmm. So on your itinerary, they'll give you uh, the navigator on your app. It'll show times like... You know, at 2.30 in the atrium, there'll be Chippendale at this time. So throughout the whole day, there's always times to meet characters. So um, you can just, you know, check that. And then sometimes they'll just randomly be out. Like I remember we saw Peter Pan one time right outside of our restaurant. So that happens too. And then on your or on deck. And on your Navigator app too, you can actually just like favorite the things that you want to yep. do. Mm -hmm. And so that way you kind of have a list of things yeah. that you want to do. So it's kind of right there so mm -hmm. you don't forget about those times right all right and the last one we're gonna do it says love all your cruise videos thank, thank you. you do you tip your room host nursery workers are the restaurants cold do you need a jacket thanks we got a few questions within the question <laughs> I love are the restaurants cold <laughs> do you need a jacket that sounds like something I would ask because I'm always cold in the movies and in restaurants yeah, I love it but I don't I don't think they are I'm, I always run hot I always yeah there's always so many people and it doesn't feel like stuffy by any means but when I'm thinking back on it, usually like when I'm wearing like sundresses, I never remember being cold. So I, don't, I yeah. would say no. Maybe it depends on when, maybe it depends on when you're cruising. But I don't know. I feel yeah. like yeah, I feel like I I'm always like are. taking if I have like an over, I'm taking it off. Like, yeah, I don't remember being cold. Yeah, yeah. So and I usually am good about remembering that because then I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm bringing a sweater next time. So to answer your next question, do you tip? your room host absolutely so disney's going to give you these little like envelopes that you can mm -hmm. tip like your your wait staff uh your, your um your room host um and it's one of those things where it's you kind of these are the things that we actually do beforehand um we do we do all the pre-tips uh before we go you can do that online um but there's going to be <clears throat> different envelopes for different people like the head server mm -hmm. all that and you tip them and they give you like the amount that you, that you should um, tip and then you can kind of go above and beyond that next question is do you tip your nursery workers? You're not gonna get like an envelope from Disney mm -hmm. for that However, that that's kind of why we we bring cash. like cash because um, we will tip different people depending on you know the they relationship went, like, above and beyond for Yeah, because yeah. honestly, there's some people that were just like my goodness like they just wowed us, mm -hmm. you know But just so you guys know like you don't have to tip every single meal So it's not it, it feels kind of weird especially if it's your first time cruising it's true where you leave dinner having this amazing service and you just you, you know you didn't pay for it you know what i mean yeah. though it doesn't feel like anything but you don't have to tip every single meal that's why they do that at the very end and you can you know do pay you know previously before you get on the cruise um it's just kind of a thing right at the end if they just you know really went above and beyond and you want to give a little extra but it's not a thing that they expect at every meal nor do i'd say most people don't do that and so for like us we do our, our pre gratuity before mm -hmm. but we also add to it at the end of the cruise as mm -hmm. well, just depending. Another thing though is Disney's really big on their feedback forms. And so they're gonna push that at the end and say, hey, like make sure that you give us like, you know, good review. Mm -hmm. um, and so make sure that you spend time to fill out yeah. that feedback form. That means a lot. It means a lot to your, your wait staff. Yeah. Well, thank you guys again for all of your questions. We so appreciate it. And if you have not, please subscribe. And go ahead and comment down below if you guys have any other questions because we will be doing another one of these after our trip. So look forward to that. And we love you guys. We'll see you in our next one. Bye. Bye.